How's it going everyone? This is Nicholas Mateo again, and for this week's tutorial, I am actually going to be doing something a little different. I'm actually going to be building this music video look from scratch. So, without further ado, let's begin. To start, I'm going to go into my color space transform with IDT and ODT. Uh, this footage was shot on Ari Alexa, so I'm going to put that in for my input color space. Once again, go into my DaVinci Wide Gamut for my output color space in Gamma. Okay. Now go into our ODT. DaVinci Wide Gamma once again for the input color space. Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Now, the first thing I do when I try to build a look from scratch, I always look at what the image looks like within the color space transform. So, when I'm looking at this footage, there's obvious, it's obviously very shifted in the blue side. And what I'm thinking here is I want to create a color separation so that his skin tone looks more natural. His shadows, the black points, are also more natural. But we are still giving a somewhat very poppy music video look. And maybe smooth it out later on with the glow if we want to. So I'm going to go into my base. And the first thing I'm going to want to do before I balance it out is create an S curve. But before I do that, I want to check my waveform real quick and actually go into my HDR pal to see if I can lift it up and it doesn't affect anything too much. Maybe somewhere around there. I'm mainly looking at his face, seeing how much we can actually grab, especially his eye right there. You can see there's more information coming out of his left eye when I lift the overall global adjustment in my HDR palette. I highly recommend you guys use HDR palette. It is incredible. So now onto our custom curves. For this, um, I'm gonna go into my add default anchors. I like using this for my custom curves. It's a very powerful tool. Now keep in mind this footage is shot behind a glass. So just bear that in mind in terms of the contrast. So I'm going to lift up my black points a little bit. Again, I'm mainly looking at his face, seeing what kind of work we're doing with him. And if I bring this down just a little bit. Let's see what we got so far. Um, I'm not actually liking what I'm doing with the uh, with his hair, it's actually kind of flattening it a little bit, so we can go back and adjust that some more. Maybe if we want to, uh... there we go, there we go. That looks a lot better. Perfect. Okay, so considering this is the, the base grade, I'm going to also use this node for my balance. So before I do my balance, let me just see if there's anything I can do with lift gamma gain. Maybe bring my lift up just a little bit. Bring everything down a little more. Something like that. Okay. So now we're on to our balance and for this as i said before i'm going to be using my offset so i'm going to 
bring this as close to the center as I possibly can. There we go. Now, as you can see, everything is more balanced. The shadows look natural. And we have a lot of information back. Now, now with this, what we can actually do is skip these for right now and go straight to our look and we can start building this out. So I'm going to bring my black points to a more teal. I'm going to bring my gain. Somewhere right there, we're obviously going to be making massive adjustments to this, but I really wanted to just look at his skin tones and just see where we're sitting at. So yeah, it's definitely shifting towards the yellow, but that's okay because this is going to be a poppy music video look. We can use gamma, which acts as sort of our mid-tones to sort of balance it out somewhere around there. And now I'm gonna use my hue versus sat and hue versus hue. To see if I can maybe bring that a little towards natural. Actually, you know what, for HSL, we should probably use that for We should actually use our HSL curves in a separate node tree. So let's try this. Just a little closer to the skin tone indicator. Yeah, definitely somewhere right there. Now, for the rest of this, we can go into our hue versus sat and increase the saturation. Again, we are really going unapologetic with this one because it's a music video. Some, something like that. Now, let's try the RGB mixer and see what kind of magic we can create from this. Mind you, I'm doing this live. I haven't tested out this footage before, so we're gonna be working it out as we go. Ooh, I kinda like the slight magenta in his skin tone, actually. Again, this is unapologetic. Doesn't, the thing about music videos is they don't have to be perfect. They can be poppy. Definitely something like that. Yeah, I like that one. So what I'm also going to do in this RGB mixer, I'm just going to go ahead and just go into my saturation and just really crank it. Go far and then dial it back. Find like a happy medium.
Somewhere right there is actually really, really good. Yeah, I like it. Now, if we want to make an adjustment, because this right here is actually pretty flat, and if we go into our waveform, it's peaking right here. Now, let's just see how, it lo how the overall image looks when we bring down. Yeah, it's usually, it's usually around this area. Let's see what happens when I just grab that and we just dial it down just a little bit. It honestly doesn't make a huge difference, but it does bring this down more so we're not losing any information. This is good. I really like this one. Now, let's go into our vignette. I definitely want to pop him out more or at the very least separate him from, the, from everyone else. And go into my power window. It's very important to experiment with the tools that DaVinci Resolve provides for you. Something like that. Go into our custom curves and bring it down. Go too far and then bring it back. Gonna make some more adjustments with the, the shape of this power window. We do that by stretching it out. Maybe create an outside node, which is based, which is the opposite of what this is. It's connected by this right here. Apologies, I can't think of the name right now, but that's okay. And now we're going to do the opposite effect and wait until you see the difference. It's subtle, but let's see the before and after. Mm -hmm. See, notice in this version, he definitely pops out a lot more than this. That's the power of vignettes and, well, power windows. But I think we can take it a step further and go into our glow. And see what can be done here. I usually like working in soft light. Bring the threshold all the way here, all the way to the left. Yeah. And then let's check our spread. And, I'm, and with this, I'm mainly looking at his face, seeing what this effect does to him. Okay. Now, this glow, this glow effect is a little too much, so I'm going to bring this down to maybe a 0.7. So let's see how it looks overall. Wow. That's definitely a massive difference. I'm just gonna test around with a color filter. Again, experimentation is definitely important. And later on, I'm gonna try the gain and gamma, see what we can do with that. somewhere around here. It's still gravitating a little towards white. I kind of like where it's actually sitting, so in terms of the color filter. So let's try out gamma and gain. Again, mainly just looking at his face. Go too far, then bring it back.
somewhere around there. Let's see what the saturation looks like if I dial it down. Yeah, it's definitely a massive difference. So again, let's find like a happy medium because this right here seems a little too warm. I think somewhere around there is really good. Now let's see if there's any noise reduction that needs, yeah, it does. Okay. So, so far, so far, overall, this looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna apply a noise reduction in the beginning of this snow tree, label that. I usually bring it to, I usually bring the threshold for Luma and Chroma to around maybe six or seven or even eight. It really just depends on how much noise reduction is actually needed. And for the Chroma, I unlink this and I bring this to maybe two. And the higher number these are, the slower your system actually is gonna be. So keep that in mind when you're doing your own grades. So let's do, let's find a spot that has a lot of heavy noise. Yeah, you can tell right here that there's a lot of noise. So that's before and that's after. Majority of it, if not all of it, is pretty much gone. So as you can see, his face is a little too blown out in terms of details so what we're actually going to do is we're going to go into our highlights grab our luminance hit shift h so we see what the image looks like without any effects put on it and actually i'm going to disable the no uh, noise reduction for a second because again it slows your system down i'm working on a mac macbook pro Okay, we can work with somewhere around there. This is really the brightest points because his face actually matches the exposure of everything else, so we'll work with it. And what I like to do is go into here and just bring it down a little bit. But let me actually zoom in on his face. No, not, not that far. Somewhere around there, okay. And let's see. What happens? Before, after. Yeah, as you can see, we are bringing some detail in his face back, especially the pores. If you guys can't see, let me just zoom in real quick. That's before. Take a look at this area. After. Yeah, this looks a lot better. But let me just see real quick how what it, what it does to the overall. Okay. Okay, so while I'm happy that the, what the exposure on, the, on his face is like, I am not exactly happy with what it's doing with everything else. So what I'm gonna do is go into my base and I'm just going to lift my lift a little bit and just see what that does. Fine tune it a little bit. Somewhere around there, actually. So if I do my before, and I, much better. And there you have it. So let's do our breakdown. 
First thing I did was I created the color space transform with IDT and ODT so I can visually see what the camera saw for the most part. And I noticed that there was a lot of blue in this image. Um, I really wanted to grab my information. So what I did initially was go into my base, created an S curve, started with my global adjustment, lifting it up just a little, little bit in my HDR palette, then created that custom curve, then made some minor adjustments to lift gamma gain. It's always important to do that. And then finally, I used my offset to bring the blues towards the yellow and orange so that we can get more of a natural shadows and begin to really separate everything because we do before and after. Everything is really sitting in the blue zone. And there we go. Then the next thing I did was I went into my look adjustment and just started building out my look. As you can see, I went with a warmer look. I didn't necessarily go with the teal and orange look because I actually really do like how the greens are sitting. Then I created an HSL curve node where I shifted the skin tones a little bit to a little more natural. and brought the saturation down in the yellow so that it wasn't gonna to be too blown out. Then I went into my RGB mixer and I really went unapologetic with the magenta because again, this is a music video, you're sort of allowed to really go hard. Then for the adjustments, I created a vignette to really pop him out. Then I created my glow, made all the adjustments there. There's still a little bit of magenta uh, leaning more towards purple, but I actually really like that change. Then I did my noise reduction, but then I realized that I needed to adjust my highlights a little bit, especially for his skin. So yeah, that's how I grade a music video. So let's roll the full clip. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I found it to be a lot of fun to really build this music video look with you guys. And please leave a like and subscribe and follow for more content. See you around.